Hyper Light Drifter is one of the most confusing but compelling games I have ever played. In today's episode, we're going to be covering the game design techniques that actually make this possible, with how to guide, teach, and tell your narrative invisibly. So, spoiler warning from this point onwards, guys, and welcome to the anatomy of Hyper Light Drifter. Our story follows the Drifter. A drifter plagued by horrific visions of a long-destroyed city, decaying titans, and a dog? What? Uh, we then follow the drifter's journey across this desolate and decaying land in search of a cure to sate their mysterious and unflinching illness. And that's everything. Because Hyperlight Drifter is unique in one sole aspect that completely changes how the game is designed and how you play. There is no text, no dialogue, no guidance, nothing. The only semblance of guidance the player is given is four different directions, north, east, south, and west. This could be incredibly intimidating, but Hyperlight Drifter's developers have struck the perfect balance to give its players freedom and free them from frustration. But how have they done this? Well, it all begins with mimicking mazes. All levels in any video game are effectively mimicking mazes, designed for the player to navigate its twisting and confusing corridors to reach its central goal, invoking a feeling of being lost which gives the player gratification for solving this puzzle. Because there is a deep part of us that yearns for this feeling of being lost and then using our own agency to find our own way out. But feeling lost can also induce fear and frustration. It's easy to design a world for a player to simply get lost with it, with arbitrary goals and no guidance. And go and watch The Anatomy of Hollow Knight for a deeper dive into that. But it's another thing entirely to design a world so flawlessly that the player can become lost within it without becoming frustrated. Ideally, as designers, we want to trick our players and induce this excitement of being lost, but never actually making the player truly lost, using techniques to subtly guide them throughout the game invisibly. But Hyperlight's developers have already shot themselves in the foot. Ow. By having no text, hints, or NPCs to tell the player what to do or where to go, which is the lazy way out, by the way, everything is left solely up to the player. So Hyperlight's levels have to use the basics of level design flawlessly for this to work. And this all begins with Q and A. Q and A level design is the art of providing the player with a question and then meaningful ways to explore the answers to that question through gameplay. And you want to constantly be providing the player with new questions, like how do I open this game? What does this item do? Why am I not subscribed? But frustration is born when no avenues to answer these questions is given, or at worst, no questions at all. This is how players become lost or disinterested. But in Hyperlight Drifter, no matter where you go, north, east, south, or west, each level is its own self-contained maze to become lost deep within its twisting chambers. But new questions and potential answers are constantly being drip-fed to the player, and this exists in every single branching path, room, or individual puzzle. And it can be as broad as, how do I get to the central pillar at the centre of the maze? Or as small as, how do I get past this gate? And possible answers are always made visible to the player. We question, answer? The player is no longer lost, but has a new short-term goal to aim for, with multiple paths and methods to try out, keeping the player engaged until the next question is posed. But just like a maze, Hyperlight's levels are also designed to hide and hinder, secreting its answers in the darkest corners of this desolate world. These are geniusly hidden, but the developers are always subtly guiding the player's attention to these paths, utilising its top-down art style to its fullest potential to hide these paths but make subtle changes to these sprites, providing more questions and future answers. Animals and enemies are then animated to move in specific directions to direct player attention to these anomalies. And having an inkling and investigating these changes and anomalies in the world is so satisfying when you find an answer to a long pondered question. But sometimes the player does simply get lost. 
Just like with mazes, some of these optional paths are intentionally designed to lead to dead ends. And usually this is frustrating, having to retrace your steps and restart all over again. But the developers have done a bit of a sneaky uh, by placing extrinsic rewards at the end of these dead end paths to make exploring and failing this maze simultaneously rewarding. Being rewarded with batteries to upgrade the drifter's abilities, PNGs of dogs or modules. And these modules are used to open certain doors that the player needs to pass to get to the center of each area. And four of these modules from each area being needed to open the final door at the end of the game. And that is a lot to collect. And they are hidden in the most unlikely of places, but there are eight for the player to collect in each area meaning there are multiple answers to these questions, allowing the player to constantly get lost and explore naturally, but always finding rewards and ways to progress. Aspiring level designers take notes, because these are the absolute basics done to a flawless degree, and simple designs done so incredibly smoothly. But simple, and that is one of my only negatives I have for Hyperlight Drifter. Due to how hands-off its designs are, the game's level designs and character abilities have to be so simplistic to not overwhelm its players. But what do you think? Let's discuss below. Do you think having such freeing design in its exploration is worth having such a simplistic world with only four main areas to explore and a limited pool of ability? Because having more weapons and abilities is more that the developers have to introduce silently. So in our last episode on the anatomy of Sekiro, we spoke about how lazy and damaging its tutorials were, all communicated through terribly timed text boxes. And even though this breaks pacing and immersion, this is unfortunately really common. It's a cheap and easy way to deliver information to the player through text. But Hyperlight Drifter doesn't have this luxury. It has to teach all of its mechanics invisibly and silently, all of the heavy work being done through its level design. Introducing the ability to attack by placing a row of the world's most sturdy flowers in your path, and forcing the player to experiment with the controls to bypass them, teaching them how to attack, and the same being done with dashing over these gaps and acquiring and using your new gun. This teaches the player everything they need to know about how to play the game at their own pace, but most of all, respects their intelligence. We all learn at different paces. Some players understand these things instantly and will blast past these tutorials like they're not even there, but some players need this time to experiment. And this form of teaching gives its players the space to try these mechanics out and figure it out for themselves at their own pace. And this reduces frustration on both sides. And yes, this is simple, but that's the entire point. There are simple and effective ways to introduce mechanics and controls to your players without using lazy text boxes! <laughs> uh, developers have been conditioned to think that text boxes are needed, and they're just blindly accepted by players, but this game is proof that they're not needed if the effort is put into designing diegetic ways to teach. And sacrifices have to be made to teach and guide the player with no dialogue at all. So why haven't they committed? They have this unique and innovative way of exploring gameplay and storytelling with no text at all, but they still somehow use it in very, very specific situations. They've already proven that they can design this type of teaching through their impeccable level design. Why go to all of this effort in every other aspect of the game but lapse on this one tiny detail? Just commit! You have gone this far, just remove it. Remove it all. All text. Delete it from existence. Banish my words to the very pits of hell. Oh, shit. My script. What the fuck? It's gone from... Oh. Fuck. Uh. Um. Um. E editing, Jermaine. Just cut to something pretty. Ugh, I have no idea what's going on. Uh, and you too, when you first start playing the game, will have absolutely no idea what is happening. But that is the point, and the game's greatest strength. 
At the beginning, you're bombarded with horrific, ethereal and puzzling visions, simply waking up to wander a world of death and decay, exploring the far reaches of this dying land. Witness to collapsed titans fallen victim to some long forgotten invasion or war, wading through their fallen bones in search of your goal, a cure to the drifter's insatiable illness. As you progressively deteriorate along this path of destruction, along your journey, destroying and discarding a host of long forgotten relics of a dying past still clinging to its memory. One by one, they fall as you search for your own selfish goal. Finally, coming to its climatic end as you delve deep into the world's core to finally defeat your demons. But after all of this is done, the cure doesn't come. The drifter collapsing to watch this crumbling world in his final moments. This journey and struggle was for nothing. There is no cure, and death greets us all with the same open hand. And once you know the story of the lead developer who has been battling a congenital heart disease that could take his life at any moment, who wanted to create something so profound and enduring that long after any of us are gone, this game and its message would live on. And that is truly beautiful. Imagery of hearts, surgery and unjust endings being visible throughout the game and the journey of the drifter echoing the journey of the developers trying to finish this project before a deadline. And this is how I personally interpreted the story, and that's the beauty of it. It's completely unique to you. There is no dialogue to sway your opinion or exposit exactly what is happening. Everything is communicated visually through actions and imagery. The struggles of the world's inhabitants, the motivations of its heroes, and your journey's goal are all communicated through visual storytelling. And yes, the story could get lost on a lot of players through this method of delivery, but if it grabs you, it refuses to let go. Hyperlight Drifter, in every aspect, is a designer's ideal, an absolute masterclass in level design, in how to guide, teach, and tell your story invisibly. And I wanted to say thank you, Heart Machine for creating such an incredible interactive piece of art and I really can't wait to see what you do with Solar Ash. Uh, thank you so much for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. And the next one on the channel is going to be the Anatomy of Dark Souls. And if you do enjoy this series and you want to see it continue, please consider supporting its production along with this host of wonderful people on Patreon and YouTube members, because we are this close to being able to do this full time. Thank you so much for the support mate, I'll see you in the next one.